Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on using the product rule for counting. Now sometimes we want to work out the total number of combinations of things. So for example, in question A, there are four choices of starter at a restaurant and five choices for main course. How many starter main combinations are there? Well, let's just say it was simpler and we had just three possible starters and we had two main courses. And let's say that the starters were A, B and C and the two different mains were called D and E. Then if we were to work out all the different possibilities, well, we could have a start of A with a main of D, so let's write AD, or we could have a start of A with a main of E, so AE, or we could have a start of B with a main of D, so we could have BD, or we could have BE, or we could have CD, or we could have CE. So we looked at that in a previous video where we could list out all the possible combinations of two things. But can you see that we get this sort of like three by two grid and that gives us two times three, which is six possibilities. So basically, if you want to combine the two things together, we can just times them together. Three times two gives you six. And indeed, you can see with this three by two grid, we get six possibilities. So the key here is that whenever you use the word and, then you times. So that's just the same with probability. If I wanted the probability of one thing and the other thing, you would times them together, provided they were independent. So it's the same kind of thing here. So if we had four choices starter and we picked one of five main courses, I've used the word and here, so therefore I would just times the four and five together to get the total number of combos, which is 20. What about the second one? There are five students competing in an event. First place is awarded a gold medal and second place silver. How many possibilities are there for medals? Well, let's think about the first thing and then the second thing. For first place, we give gold medal. So how many possibilities are there for giving out the gold medal? Well, you've got one of five students to choose from. So we've got five choices for the gold medal. And so we put a times, we're also picking a silver medal. So how many students can we choose for the silver medal? Well, this is slightly more complicated. You might just think we times by five again, but we've already given the gold medal to one of the students. And therefore, there's only four students left where you can give them the silver medal. So we go to times by four. So five times four, and in fact, we get an answer of 20 again. So it's a bit like with probability when you have sampling without replacement. Once you've taken an item out of the bag, then you've got less choices of that particular colour, for example, for the subsequent choices. And the same applies for these kind of questions here. So be careful. If you're taking something and not putting it back, so you're giving a student a gold medal, and then that student is not allowed to be chosen again, you've got less possibilities in future. Now C is a bit of a complicated one. It looks initially like it's going to be the same thing. Out of five students, I choose two of them to give a prize to. How many possibilities are there? Now, what students might do is they might just say, oh, I've got a five and I've got a two. I just multiply them together to get ten. But that's not really thinking about what's going on. You've got to think about what are you choosing at each stage. Well, I've got to pick one student to give a prize to, and then I'm going to pick another student to give a prize to, so I've given prizes to two students. So initially it looks like it's going to be the same as this. I have five choices for my first student, and then I've got four choices for my second student. So I pick a first student, and I pick a second student. I times them together. However, there's a subtle difference between this problem and the previous one. Let's just say I initially picked Bob to give a prize to, and then I picked Charlie as my second person to give the prize to. That would be the same outcome as if I picked Charlie first, and if I picked Bob second. I would consider those two different scenarios as the same thing, because in both cases, I've given prizes to Bob and Charlie in either order. I don't care what order I gave them to. And basically, if you don't care about the order and you've picked two things, you have to divide by two. Because that means if you have Bob and Charlie and Charlie and Bob, you've got those two possibilities. By dividing by two, you then only count that as one possibility rather than two. So you've got to divide by two and that will give you an answer of 10. Whereas in part B, if I was to give a gold medal to Bob, and a silver medal to Charlie, that 
is a separate scenario than if you gave Charlie the gold medal and Bob the silver medal. That is a different outcome. So the order in which you give the two prizes does matter because gold is different from silver. Whereas for this question in C, it doesn't matter whether you give Bob the prize first or Charlie the prize second because ultimately Bob and Charlie have both got prizes. You don't care about which way round they are. So we divide by two to account for duplicates.